want to help you understand God a little bit more so that perhaps you can believe him a lot better. Because if you believe him, he can do so much more in your life what he has already done from eternity. You and I are just merely creatures of God's creation in time. But by regeneration, what we call the rebirth experience, we are more than that because now we have been blended with the God of eternity. And the problem now arises that it becomes now difficult for finite creatures like you and I to understand the timing of an eternal, everlasting God. Because the eternal God, whose we are and whom we serve, decided some things, and when he decided them, he did not decide them in time. Paul, in his letters to the church, in Greece, particularly to Ephesus, alludes to the fact and says, God chose us, past tense, in him before the foundation of the world, before the foundation or the concept of time existed. He further says in Ephesians, in the first chapter from about the third or fourth verse, that he has blessed us, God has blessed us, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly or eternal places in Christ Jesus, he blessed, past tense. Meaning then that everything that is mine, God has already given it to me before I even got here. Slap three people a high five, tell them it's already yours. Yeah, it's already yours. The anointing, the favor, the bread, the understanding, the house, the car. The upliftment, the husband, the wife, it's all ready yours. It's already yours. Say it again because I didn't really hear you too well. <laughs> now, now fix it in your mind. What is already yours? Say it again. It's already mine. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Some of you ain't talking. <laughs> Therefore, if it is already yours, it is not an issue of you going to look for it. It's an issue of it coming to look for you. You ain't looking for the house. I know you called the realtor and got a phone number and have made a few appointments. But let me tell you, the house is looking for you. You ain't looking for the car. I know you've been going to, to affordable cars and to... Limit, limitless cars and to Mercedes-Benz car shop and all the rest of that. But can I tell you something? You ain't looking for the car. The car is looking for you. I know you're hoping, trusting, praying and believing that so-and-so is going to marry you and you, you think you're looking for a husband. But let me tell you, marriage is looking for you. You're not looking for marriage. You think you're looking for marriage. But marriage is looking for you. In fact, marriage got in you and started to get you to look for it because it was the one who was really looking for you. Uh, uh, you thought you were looking for God, but God was looking for you, but he put the look in you so that you could find him because he was the one who really was looking for you. Understand what I'm saying? Because God was never the one who was lost in the first place. It was you and I who were lost. What I'm trying to say to you is that your destiny is going to happen. Now, if you don't believe it, I want you to just sit there and look, look silly, look straight. Just don't do anything. But if you do believe it, look at three or four people. Tell them it's got to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Otherwise, God ain't God. It's going to happen. In Psalm 119, verse 89, the prophet said, or the psalmist said, Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. Because when he looked back over his life, he realized that every promise God gave him was settled from eternity. And over the processes of time, each promise came to pass. And by the way, the prophet is the boy who we look at in Psalm Samuel, 1 Samuel 16. The time was already going to happen anyways. So God moves you not the time. 
But other times, you were going to happen anyways, so God moves the time. Now, this, 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 this is important because in one scenario, the time was set and you had to be manipulated. In another scenario, you were set and the time had to be manipulated. This is why it's, it's wonderful to have a God who is both everlasting in his nature and all powerful in his nature all at the same time. Because his everlastingness or his eternalness, as the Jews teach us, that he is alpha and omega, beginning and the end, first and the last. That he declares the end from before he begins the beginning because he dealt with the end before he started the beginning. He started the start when the start started, but himself was never started and was already in the end before he started the start. So he knows the end from the beginning. That's why he's called alpha and omega, the author and the finisher of your faith. And he finishes your faith before he starts it. That means that he has power over time. But, but, but that means that, that, if, if he, that means he can manipulate the time. But if that was all he'd do, I'd be in a mess. But I thank God that he's not only everlasting and thus powerful to operate over time, he's also all-powerful and almighty in his nature, which means even though he can manipulate time, he can also manipulate you. So that when your time is set, the 17th of August, 2009, and you are in uh, July the 19th, 2009, and you're not yet ready for what he's getting ready to do on the 17th, and he has 31 days. God is powerful enough to manipulate you enough, to rearrange your character enough, so that by the time the 17th comes, you are ready for what he already made ready for you. Give me an amen if you believe it, sir. How many of you know that God can make you ready when he's ready? He knows what buttons to push, what situations to allow, what requests to bequeath to the enemy, what, what things Satan has asked for from you that he's willing to give him because he knows it may seem that it get, like it's hurting you, but really it's helping you. God knows how to rearrange your life. I've known some of you for a long time. And let me tell you, time has changed you. Some folk, we were nasty, ugly. I don't mean ugly in looks. Ugly in behavior, ugly in attitude, obnoxious, rude. Jealous, wicked, strifeful, but, but time, time changes you. If you've been here for 10 years, I, I used, man, I would, I shoot from the hip. But now, now I'm, I'm changing, I'm a little better, I'm changing. Because time has a way of arranging you, rearranging you for what God has in store for you. So by the time God is ready and your time has come, you are also ready for the time that God prepared you for. So when the everlasting nature and the all-powerful nature of God move together over you and your time, look at somebody and tell them, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. It doesn't matter how hard Satan tries to fight you, it's got to happen. doesn't matter how badly the cancer has ravaged your body, what God said has got to happen has got to happen. doesn't matter how hellish your situation is, it has got to happen. Because when you put the everlasting nature of God and the all-powerful nature of God together, he'll manipulate both time and you to make it happen when it's supposed to happen. If you believe it, shout amen, somebody. Amen. That means you need to be able to tell the devil, Satan, you cannot move in my time. If you understand that, that Satan has a time in your life, but God also has a time that he calls your time. Please give me a witness. You see, in, in the Hebrew axiom, they have a concept called day. It's in Hebrew, yom, where you get the word yom kippur.